today was farcical. Nobody knew it was happening until four o'clock yesterday afternoon. I got a message late yesterday afternoon asking if I could get here. And I, I dashed down overnight. One fascinating thing is that the judges told the lawyers not to turn up. The judges said this is being held without counsel because they won't accept any submissions and the defence team would not be allowed to say anything. So Julian wasn't in the court or present by video link and his legal team were supposed not to be present in the court, although Gareth Pierce decided to ignore the instruction not to, and did arrive to um, show support and, and to consult on, on next steps. And the bland statement from the judge who said that, you know, the assurances by the United States government constitute a solemn undertaking by one sovereign state to another <laughs> and therefore have to be accepted. As though states never abuse human rights uh, and states never break their, their word, whereas in fact, of course, by definition, it is states who are the largest um, abusers of human rights. It, it was extremely frustrating to be in that court and and to see it. Uh, and the you know the bland assured, the unmitigated acceptance that anything the United States government says must be true by the court and the failure by the court to address at all, either in court today or in the written judgment. The question of the many cases in the past where the United States government has given such assurances and broken them was very, very hard to take. It was difficult. The judge himself was smug, would I think be. You know, once you've actually issued an instruction before you start, lawyers aren't wanted and nobody else is going to be allowed to speak. I guess you get to be smug because nobody else is going to be allowed to say anything. Was the Lord Chief Justice there or was just Holroyd? No, just Holroyd, the Lord Chief Justice Holroyd. didn't show. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. No, it was only Holroyd. We were able to meet with Julian's legal team afterwards, and Julian's counsel was able to speak to him in the prison about the next steps, and then we were able to take it forward. The situation now becomes entangled in farce, really, because we have until the 23rd of December to lodge an appeal to the Supreme Court against this decision, which would prevent Beretza from going ahead and acting as instructed. And remember, Beretza wasn't told to look at this again. She was told to cancel her order and accept the diplomatic assurances and order the extradition of Julian Assange and refer it to the Home Secretary. But we have until the 23rd of December to launch an appeal to the Supreme Court against today's decision. The Supreme Court will then decide whether or not to hear that appeal. Should that appeal be unsuccessful, and we could be talking six months away here, another six months of Julian in Belmont, uh, even possibly longer, it then goes back to be later in the magistrate's court to order the extradition. At that point, we get to counter appeal again to the High Court, to the same judges today, on the other points, on the point of freedom of speech, on the no political extradition point, on the point of the CIA involvement, the attempts to assassinate, on the point of the witness who lie in Iceland. So we have to conclude right up to the Supreme Court the hearing on the US government's points of appeal before we can initiate the hearing on our points of appeal. So this could easily be another two to three years before this extradition is resolved, all of which time Julian is dying effectively, being destroyed in these conditions in Belmarsh. So it's by no means the end of anything today in terms of legal process. But unless a, a political decision is taken in London or Washington or both to end this persecution, the process is going to succeed in destroying Julian, however the process ends up in the end. And that, of course, is the enormous worry. But the, um, just the, the sheer hypocrisy of the whole thing and the failure of the court to acknowledge in any way that this is about freedom of speech, this is about war crimes. This is about the murder of 
of innocence. Um, just the way the court divorced itself from all of that was really, was really sickening to see.